If you're there, guys, give us a minute. We're having technical difficulties. If you guys can hear me, put something on the comments. There it is. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Hey, welcome to Badgers Heavy Hitters. So, sorry about that. We're having technical difficulties here. Uh, I'm not able to see myself, but I'm sure we're getting it down. So, uh, Welcome. <laughs> you know, let's start with that. So, as you can see, I brought you another uh, backdrop, you know, so that we got something. So, this is what your donations have been going to. Um, so, let's start with uh, putting this out there. I have a P.O. box for you that you guys that want to mail me content, you know, mail what you would like to see come out as content. So, if you want to put it something in a letter, shoot it my way, that's great. It's at P.O. Box 10863, Canoga Park, California, 91309. Um, and for those of you that want to help out with the seventh tradition or are able to help out, I'm sure a lot of you want to, but just aren't able to, and that's fine, I get it. For the longest time, I couldn't pitch into the seventh tradition at the meetings that I go to, so I totally get it. Uh, just so you know, what I plan on doing with the Seventh Tradition down the road is just that. I plan on finding a homeless vet and following his story from the time he's on the streets to getting a haircut, taking a shower, and seeking employment. So, is this thing doing right? Or is it just slow motion? What's going on there? No. So, anyway, uh, and for that, the PayPal is OGBadgersHeavyHitter at Gmail. So... I just wanted you to know, like, I'm not trying to line my pockets with anything. I'm going to absolutely give back because that's what I want this channel to be about. Recovery, a little comedy here and there. Uh, the negativity I could really do without, you know what I mean? Because um, for that matter, I'd rather chill alone, you know, than be down with a fake crowd. That's for sure. You know, uh, I can't really read the comments right now, but I'm going to give, you know, the shout outs that I can when I can. Uh, tonight, what I'm trying to do is just let a few more people come to the channel before I get started. Uh, so the channel is more a recovery channel, but you will get my story too, because my story has to do a lot to do with prison. I'm not trying to compete with any of the prison shows, but uh, speaking of which, so there's a show out there that's trying to talk... They're a Virginia show trying to talk about California politics in the 50-50 yards. So for those of you don't, who don't know what a 50-50 yard is, let me explain it to you. So you have gangsters, you have used to be gangsters, and then soft motherfuckers. So the used to be gangsters, not all of them are just pieces of shit, but they end up living with pieces of shits because they're tired of killing. They're tired of killing for other people, for another man telling them what to do. They're tired of it, you know what I mean? The gang-banging life sounds great when you come in and you're being protected. And you'll hear a little bit about the protection thing tonight, you know. Uh, there's strength in numbers, you know. And, and we're so outnumbered in the California penal system. And, you know, fortunately out here we could hug anybody we want. We could, you know, like... I don't give a crap about the color line today, you know what I mean? Like, if you're a solid dude, you're a solid dude. If you're a solid solid chick, you're a solid chick. You know, so, I don't trip on that out here. Should I go back? Many of you guys are going to ask the question, should I go back? What would I do? Well, I'm not going back, alright? So, I'm not going to have to deal with that. So, and when I say I was looking to help a, a vet or two out there, I, I can't just do one vet because odds are he's going to drop off 
that's our statistics, you know. But I'd like to find, you know, at least two people to follow their story and be able to finance them through detox. And I'm sure I'll get a detox to set it up for me, but then I'll have to pay for his bed at a sober living until he's capable of paying his own. Because that's what we do. In the seventh tradition, we pay our own, you know. Uh, and thank God for that. Nobody's giving me any handouts. I gotta get up and hustle each and every day. So I'm for I'm grateful that that's not my story, you know. And don't get me wrong. When I said something about EBT today, I did collect EBT because I had no choice, you know. I, I collected it as long as I needed it, and then when I didn't need it, I gave it up, and it was painful to give up. Now EBT is California's food stamp card. General relief is what it's called out here. Well, they have Cal Fresh, and then. Uh, general relief which is you know helping convicts out with 200 bucks a month <laughs> same as gate money 212 i think it is 221 so that's what it was government yeah government cheese whatever it is so that's what that is so uh, i was talking about the 50 50 yards you know i don't know how if i ever start discussing what goes on in the feds or what goes on in virginia or Oregon or any other penitentiary anywhere, please unsubscribe, okay? Because I have no friggin' clue what goes on in those states. I can only tell you my experience from California, you know, and, and California is the most racist penal system there is. So, uh, I'm trying to see how many are on live right now. So, 170 of you guys watching, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, so, I've been giving this a lot of thought today, as you could imagine. I'm going to scoot this over real quick. So, it's getting me confused. Anyway, uh, so I, apparently I still have some work to do on some of the issues that I've been through, you know, because remembering this shit that happened today brought up some, some feelings that I haven't, I'm not accustomed to feeling, you know. It took me the longest time to even learn how to feel, and I I'm still have trouble recognizing what a feeling is. So, way back when, when the Rodney King situation was going on, I was out to court. I was to, at uh, Pitches on a Ranch, Medium South, also known as Wayside. And, you know, we knew they were in trial and everybody was following the trial. And, ah, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and the excitement was the excitement. I never really got into it because I didn't give a shit one way or the other. You know, like, whatever happened out there, I can't control any of that shit. But, uh, all of a sudden, when they said the verdicts were in, the TVs went off. That's that. No more TVs, you know? And, uh, so that was a smart move on their end, but guess what? <laughs> They're not that smart, you know what I mean? They didn't shut the friggin' phones off. So, phone calls were made, the verdict was found out, and let me tell you, man, when you fucking smell chum in the water, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? When you smell war getting ready to kick off, you feel it, man. You just feel it right here inside. It, it's a sickening feeling. Um, if you haven't been there, you, I can't even explain it to you. You know, there's so there's a dorm with probably a roughly 120 people in it in each dorm, and oh my god. So there may be eight whites, ten whites per dorm. You know what I mean? So you can imagine how many are solid, how many are there just for driving on a suspended license or fucking beating their old lady or, you know, some some minor drug charge or something. So the numbers aren't very good for us, you know? And so they lock the yards down. So there's three barracks in between fences and it starts at 30, 32 is laundry. And then 33, 34, and then a fence. And 35, 36, 37, fence. You get the idea. It all the way, went all the way down to 52. So you could feel the tension in the air. And, uh, you know, f I'm from the valley, San Fernando Valley. So I had a gang of homeboys there, uh, you know, brown homeboys there that were like, hey, dog, don't trip. And I'm like, what do you mean don't trip? What am I supposed to be tripping on? What is going on? You're like, I was just oblivious to the fact of what was really fixing to happen. 
you know, and I, so we do four o'clock count, and when we go back in, about five minutes later, you hear uh, all deputies, all deputies disperse, disperse, get the fuck out of there, you know, and I was like, what in the fuck is going on, at that point, I seen what was going on, uh, let's just go with Rodney King's people were standing up in the dorms, and they were, they were getting the whites, you know, they were just fucking, it was brutal what was going down with us, you know, I, I got a, I think a coffee pot upside the head, I don't even know what it was, and then a bunch of essays stepped up, and like, you ain't fucking with this dude, so, and you know, I hadn't really given any black city problems either to where, it, like, I was number one on their fucking hit list, but, you know, I was a skinhead in there, so, yeah, of course, I'm somewhere right around number one on their shit list. So, you know, I, I recall getting hit with something. I think it was a coffee pot. And then they backed me up. Hey, no, nah, this ain't going down with, you know, we're the Mexicans are going to get involved. And we're just going to be one big thing. So, <clears throat> down in the lowers, <clears throat> the lower 50s and all that, it was really kicking off. So, at this point... You know, we're try I remember running to the front, and there was a bunch of a couple other whites. I'm just not going to say a bunch, but a couple other whites. And then some whites became Southsiders in like five minutes' time. You know, they were like, oh, I'm running with the Mexicans now. So we were pretty much on our own where they were concerned too. But that's okay. There's nothing worse than half ass loyalty, man. You're either down with me or you're not. So, anyway. We all end up going outside. Now, mind you, I told you there's gates, and there's gates, and then there's gates and gates. Well, those gates were fucking torn open, shredded open with the thick old locks. You know, when you when you got 300 people trying to kick the the gates open, it just opened, just like that. You know, and they were fucking us off. You know, I was fortunate enough to where I grabbed a broom handle, I snapped a broom handle, and by this time. Up in the upper part, dorms where we weren't being fucked with as much, we started moving our way that way to go down and help people out. There's probably about 15 of us, but remember there's packs of like 30 running around. But we all had weapons of some sort, a mop ringer or something. But guess what? They had weapons too, but they just didn't want to run up into those that are, uh, that are already weaponized, you know? So... It was going off, you know, it was just fucking crazy. So we started pulling bodies in as a group of whites that were just pummeled the fucking up. And we were dragging them to the gate where you, the sheriffs were on the other side of the gate. And we were like, uh, they're like, fucking come out here, come out here. They were willing to have us come outside the gate uncuffed and everything. And we were like, you guys come in here. Come fucking help us out, you know. And... That's when you figure out, you know, like, your manhood, man. You know, like, fucking, I could bail right now and bail on these people, or, you know, I could step up and fucking do what I'm, do the right thing and fucking help mine out. And, you know, I say mine today because that's what it was at the time, you know? Like, you're all my people now, but that's not how it was there. I can assure you that. And so we were moving as a group. The sheriff, he fucking threw me a buck knife so I had a straight, real buck knife in there, and a couple other sheriffs followed suit with that. They threw fucking us a couple other things. So we start moving in packs with weapons. They'd run up on us. We'd be like, "What's cracking?" And then they'd go find the next individual. So it's a straight war zone. There's fucking blankets burning. There's clothes burning. There's mattresses burning out there. It's a straight war zone. No sheriffs would come onto the yard. Um, shit, talk about wanting a cop, <laughs> needing a cop. You know, like, seriously, would have been okay with them coming on. So they were not coming back on that yard until the National Guard got there. So we're going around, and the first guy we pulled out was just beat up. You know what I mean? No big deal, whatever. Standard ass whooping, smashing into the ground, but still needed medical attention. The next guy we found, so I guess he was a corpse, but he had plastic wrapped around his head, a trash bag wrapped around his head, and it was lit on fire. And we were dragging him to the... I'm like, why even drag this dude, man? Fucking, it, he's a done deal. You know what I mean? I, I didn't need to film. The, we're putting out plastic all melting on his face and shit. You know? And... So, some of you guys are probably thinking that 
this is far-fetched, but I can assure you it's not only far-fetched, it's probably undersold as to what was going on. It, and I get, you know, your skepticism or whatever, but I'm telling you, I was there firsthand. So, another guy that we go to help out turns out to be one of my boys, you know what I mean? I'm, Blue, I hope you're out there. I hope you're doing well. You know, I hope you found the light that I was able to find and move on with your life. So, my boy Blue stuck up in the barbed wire on the fence because he was trying to get over the fence but he had a broken leg so his legs sort of just hanging there dangling and we were like come on man come down fucking holding blankets for him to jump into so like the firemen do that type of trip and he's tripping on his leg he said it didn't hurt yet but you know he's tripping on it because it's just hanging there swinging you know and once so while the four of us were holding the blankets i think there were like six of us actually there was probably now at this time there's like 15 of us that are you know they're they're supporting us with their weapons you know they would run up and then run up just it was a free-for-all a straight free-for-all and you know the mexicans just stayed out of it they didn't get involved in it with in any way shape or form except for maybe taking a fucking few whites under their wing and helping them out you know like you ain't fucking with this dude like they did with me you know and then so at that point, no matter how scared you are, man, because trust me, everything in me wanted to get the fuck off that yard when that sheriff said, fucking, you guys come out here. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it just would have so been the wrong thing to do. And, and I was getting ready to go upstate, back upstate, and I did not want that jacket following me that I abandoned my people at a time of need. You know, and I, I never want that jacket to follow me out here, in there, anywhere. I don't ever want that jacket to follow me. So... We continued on pulling bodies out. You know, I don't know. We pulled six, eight bodies out. And I, I believe the the death toll was like four or six. You guys could probably Google it. You know what I mean? And it would tell you how many people died. But I guarantee you that our hands were on that the bodies of the ones that died. And we pulled them to the fence where the sheriffs were right there. They're waiting on fucking National Guard to get there. So... What ends up happening is we all end up huddling up in the upper dorms. Yeah, we were scared. Yeah, who wouldn't be? You know what I mean? There was thugs there too, but they were scared too. But uh, as long as we kept our numbers and we kept our weapons, we were solid, you know. And so we stayed there, whatever National Guard shows up, and they come in just fucking stomping everybody, you know. And we're all snatched up. And... At the time, I had a mustache, a big old brochure, because I was finally able to grow one, you know what I mean? Like, I went from being a baby, not being able to grow a mustache, to having a big old whip. So, and I had hair at the time, because I was back down here, so I didn't have access to razors on a regular, so I had hair, and it was sort of going back, so they thought I was Mexican, or a white Southsider, I'm not sure, but they tried to skip past me, and I'm like, hey, bud, I'm fucking white, too you know they're like all right get out so they sent us all out they sent us up to barracks 32 as this is the morning now mind you they're going through doing bodies picking up bodies that they want out of there any white was leaving that fucking yard you know so we go up there and we're all in the laundry room and so we're uh all cuffed up as fours you know we're cuffed up at, there's two you know what i'm talking about me a cuff, him a cuff, and there's a chain with them a cuff, them a cuff. So one of the first things you should learn how to do when you get to any kind of institution is learn how to slip them cuffs. You know, usually you can find a, the gold uh, staples that are in the big boxes are usually the best. You could sharpen them down and make them into a handcuff key in a second. So, you know, we're all in the room and it's morning time and the sheriffs decided to continue and instigate, man. So what they did was, I guess, some of the blacks that they had cuffed up were outside. They were cuffed up the same way we were, four to a chain. And they were leaving the yard. There was total visual proof that they had been into some shit, whatever. They had hurt someone, been hurt somehow, whatever. So they were leaving the yard as well. And I guess a couple of them had to go to the bathroom. The only bathroom around up there was going through our fucking... Uh, laundry room to the back so all they did was they opened the doors and they let two chains come through so that's eight people 
and there were probably 30, 35 of us in the laundry room at the time, and you never seen so many cuffs come off. The doors get closed, and they sat in the window with cameras, knowing this was gonna happen. They had to have known this was gonna happen. They were prepared with cameras to let those eight individuals go to the restroom, and we all slipped our cuffs and just got as much run back as we could, you know what I mean? Just stomping the shit at them until we all got pepper sprayed and whatever. That was like the only run back it seemed like we were gonna get, because I mean, not one of us got by without a nick or a scratch or some kind of ring-a-ding-ding -ding going on. You know, uh, it was brutal, man. So they keep us in there after that incident. They have us outside in the fucking hot-ass ground, laying on our face and our knees in the fucking concrete. It's just crazy. So they get us all up and they bust us over to Medium North. So we get to Medium North and... Uh, Mind you, I'm already a convict at this time. I've been to the joint, I'm back down to court. So, you know, like, there's a few of us that knew what the fuck we were doing. There were some, you know, some other convicts there. So they take us over to Medium North and they divide us up and they send us into these, uh, Medium North's a hard facility. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty hard facility, you know what I mean? It was brutal. So, but it's just a concrete box. And they send us in there, you know, six at a time or something. And we go in there and I get over and I just start to make up my bed and when I feel a broom handle crack me across the f back side of the head, side of the face, because when it broke it, it was it was just brutal. They cracked me good, you know what I mean? I just dropped my shit and ran up to the front. And as I did that, I seen a bunch of other people running up to the front. So they take us all out and they stick us in one of the visiting boxes. And now mind you, there's fucking three full visiting boxes full of people you know and they start saying they're gonna fucking divvy us up again and just send us different dorms so i was like all right everybody check it out take off your white wristband and nobody answer for their name you know like they want to play games let's fucking play games so the sheriff hears me say that and he goes hold on man don't fucking do that please don't do that I go, well, then you're not sending us into another dorm, you know what I mean, until, you know, you get something figured out. So what they did was they cleared out an entire dorm, put us all, all the whites in that one dorm, and you'd think the savagery ended there. Not even close, my friends, not even close. It was just like just beginning. Those that didn't get really involved or didn't really participate or whatever commenced to having the shit stomped out of them and then having them stuck in the back corner, you know what I mean, like the cowering dogs that we thought they were, and they were not allowed to go up to the front. If they tried to go to the front, there was no place else for them to go, and any place they would go, a kite would follow them, and it'd just be the end of their fucking prison career, let's just say that. So the brutality did not even stop there, you know, so what they did at that point even after, so after that, like, they're just saying, man, what are we going to do with these guys? It's just fucking chaos everywhere. So what they did was they took us and they fucking uh, took us to what they call a, a minimum facility up there, which had dorms. And now they, mind you, they, they brought on National Guard, so the National Guards are outside the dorms. So you can't come in or out of the dorms, you know, but they take us up there. Now I'm thinking to myself, here we go again, man. Just here we go again, you know? And it didn't really play out that way once we got there. By the time we got there, we were all so beat up from either the man or whoever was attacking us or whatever. Um, it was friggin' brutal, you guys. You know, like the fear that just remained with me for a while and don't get me wrong I had already been through a few riots at this point but this one was was something special let me tell you it lasted for a long time there was nobody there to come to the rescue uh, so uh, yeah it was very fearful shit but I mean that's where you find out who you are that's where you find out where your character is you know and, and I remember in the morning I was smoke going everywhere billowing everywhere and you know talk about uh, Braveheart it was just like that man you know you know oh, 
Yeah, Los Angeles was on fire. Like, yeah, it was just crazy, right? So, and if anybody could sit there and say that they wouldn't have been in fear and they were a warrior about it, well, you're a better man than me. You know what I mean? Like, I'd already been through some shit, but that was some horrific shit. Uh, things slowly settled down, you know, as they do, because when the man came in, he just put a smash down, you know, like, so Supermax was open by this time too. So what they had started putting us in there, you know, and Supermax is crazy. So what they do is they'll write kites that go to the, there's three pots, bam, bam, bam. You know, you could see all three pots. So as soon as one pod kicks off, the next pod's supposed to kick off, the next pod's supposed to kick off, and then that's going on throughout every every pod in the facility. You know what I mean? That's how it goes. So, so the CERT teams can't be in there in time to really help anybody, you know what I mean? Like by the time it comes time to make that kind of move, we don't want nobody to come in, man. And I'm telling you, you've never seen shit like tables being torn apart, metal tables, folded over metal tables, man, and, and just being torn apart. like fucking crazy man just the things that happen the things that get torn out the bunks that get shredded and the the damage that occurs and the, you know all the stabbings with everything from just broom little pieces of broom handle to just pencils to whatever i mean you use whatever you have at your your means and disposal you know it's crazy so I told you I'd let you know about the Rodney King riots. Like I said, this isn't a prison channel, but my life has a lot to do with prisons. So every now and then I'm going to give you guys a tidbit of, uh, you know, prison tales. So I'm going to do this one more time. We're not done, but I'm just going to do this one more time. So for those of you that would like to drop us a kite, something along those lines. Somebody sent me some shirts today. Totally cool, by the way. Thank you. You know what I mean? Sniper One, got you, bro. I'm still waiting to hear from you tonight. I'm going to check the comments. You know, um, so about P.O. Box 10863, Canoga Park, California, 91309. And for those of you that want to help with... Uh, the seventh tradition or are able to help I know like I said some of you want to help but aren't in a position to I get it so it's PayPal OG Badgers heavy hitters at gmail for the PayPal so we appreciate all donations I'm gonna put them to good use I assure you that this is another backdrop right here so that way you're not just getting some boring ass dirty barbecue back here or whatnot you know uh, so my nickname lots of you guys are asking about my nickname and i've told the story on fresh out so there was this big dude we're just gonna leave some details out uh me and him would mix them up whenever i would head back to the bathroom he was back towards the back he hated me i hated him and i wasn't fixing to roll shit up like i said the numbers were really small on our end so i got him up with this dude a couple times and uh he got the best of me this day so yeah i've been beat up several times man but you know what i mean like i've got my share of fair so uh i had had enough that was it you know what i mean like fucking so that night i go and i plug in the coffee pot you know and you get a shower scrubber so it's a thicker handle on the shower scrubber and it's a thick bottom with a piece of scrubbing brush like that with the thick scrubbing brushes so i let the water heat up i went over and i put some baby oil in it and so and you know i grabbed a fucking couple socks and i grabbed the, the coffee pot and I went back there while dude was laying down and I fucking chucked it on him. And he gets up, he's screaming and screaming, he's getting ready to come at me and I grab that shower scrubber and I hit him in the jaw. <laughs> Knocked his part of his jaw out of the side of his face. And I guess I was growling the whole time. So, it, you know, when it came to the savagery of me doing the things that I was doing, I was growling and So 
so yeah anyway I was growling and, and then next thing you know the kite started following me hey tell badger he fucking you know mean respect so that's what's considered respect there you know what I mean getting down and, and making sure you you get the final word as to what's been said or done to the next individual you know uh, I want to try reading some of these these uh, comments so Okay, that's nice, you know, uh, <laughs> I just want to gangbang when I see some of these comments, you know, because people don't have the slightest clue what they're fucking talking about. So, let me see, uh, hit the like button if you're a Peter Gazer, hey my boy, stay away from them showers, man, drop the Tonka truck and step away from the sandbox. Wait, is that because you lost a fight? No, no, I, I didn't do that to him because I lost a fight, bro. There's more to this story. I'm leaving some shit out because, let's just put it this way, the fights were never fair. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got into it with a couple of them at the same time, and that's how it stayed. I'm just trying to sum up the story for you, you know? But, yeah, I probably would have done that if I really lost a fight in front of 120 people to the degree that I got beat that day. I probably would have, uh done that to him but no one individual would ever be able to do that to me I would hope um, shout out from Peru hey Peru appreciate you so okay. uh, beyond lockdown my boy you know what I mean hey I'm sorry bro I meant to throw you a shout out earlier you know what I mean uh, and JD of course is always there with my boy Kenny Kenneth Shavely so uh, I think I think what? So, uh, from Ohio, thank you, Ohio. You want to see my schlong? It's not much to look at, bud. It's got some marbles in it, though. You know what I mean? If you're interested in some marbles, I've been known to knock out a tooth or two. So, shout out for Sydney, Australia. Cool, cool. You know, Germany, nice, nice. New Zealand, nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, you know... Thank you for giving me a platform of having, feeling some self-worth with the things that I do on a daily basis. Because I try and make every day magical now, man. Like, I have to see the magic in the day, the beauty in the day. Like, it's a little chilly out here for us Californians, you know what I mean? Like, so, we're being wimps as far as the weather goes, but as far as our penal system goes, not even close. So, do people medication in prison? Absolutely, people get medication in prison. Uh, Sinaloa. Whoa, way down there, huh? Jersey, Hayward, California. You man, it bigger than Rocky. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have my glasses on, you guys. So better. My big booty aunt says hi. Your big booty aunt says hi. We'll tell her what's up. You know what I mean? Shout out from New York, uh, New Zealand. We did that. So. A lot of you guys ask about when I was in the shoe at Corcoran, so if I had seen Manson, well for starters, who really gives a fuck about Manson and the fucking shitty shit he did, you know what I mean? Like, if that's the pl shit that pleases some of you guys, this may not be the right channel, I don't know, but Manson was a nobody, man. Uh, nobody fucking the brand didn't want to fuck with him nobody would fuck with him once the drugs dried up and he didn't have people running for him no more he had to go phu you know which is protective housing unit so let me tell you a little something about charlie so anytime they would transfer his cell from his cell it's already locked down so it's not like they slam it down but they do they slam the yard down to where whatever they'd come and they put a spit mask on him so it looks like the Hannibal Lecter dude, you know what I mean? They put a spit mask on him and take him wherever he's going, medical or fucking probably parole hearing, I don't know, you know what I mean? So, but Charlie had money. Charlie had followers. Charlie had people asking about Charlie in my comments, you know? So he had money. And he bought everybody, mind you, upstairs is PHU, downstairs is SHU. PHU stands for Protective Housing Unit, SHU, Segregated Housing Unit. So, what's the difference? I don't know. But, you know what I mean? Like, you're fucking slammed or slammed. So, anyway, Charlie buys everybody on his tier a television. So, you know, fucking cool. Well, 
as soon as each individual got and mind you there's some people in there with nothing that had nothing and when they opened their doors man they all threw their fucking tvs over the tier you know the tvs that he bought them he just was not a popular inmate he was not respected he was not nothing you know he was punked by we'll just say my people you know uh like i said once the drugs dried up so did he you know uh let me get a view of some of these comments and see if i can maybe come up so okay so for those of you who don't know my boy beyond lockdown has a channel too maybe you want to check him out and see what kind of content he has i've only checked out a little bit of him uh like i've gotten away from watching those the, those shows because it seems like they've ran out of content and they have to talk about shit that they don't know you know what i mean like so and the reason i know about the 50 50 yards right now is because i'm still in contact with somebody from the back just called me like two nights ago you know when a midnight phone call it's either bad or bad so they called me a couple nights ago and midnight it's you know counts done everybody's done it's all locked down so people break out their phones you know what i mean get into the gangster box and get their phones out and uh start calling their people and doing the scams that they're doing and the plotting that they're plotting ain't nobody praying they're just plotting so you know after midnight comes the call and so i hit them up about the 50 50 yards and I, as i was saying uh eop yards three yard and eop yards like so up to the three yards eop one two and three yards or they were trying to do it with the eop yards which is hot meds people that you know woo woo fucking gotta take hot meds so eop yards you can't be an active member gang member anyway so you're not supposed you know you can't be eop and active gang member just by your people's standards so they've done it on one two and three yards and i guess it's just been a fucking bloodbath you know all these people that dropped out pc'd up whatever that's not what they signed the papers for you know that's what uh, could i talk to some people on that side too they're not bad dudes they're just fucking tired of putting in work for other people you know they just got tired of the madness and now they're they're like man i eat ice cream and sit on the yard now you know oh well, all right and the ones that i talk to i know for a fact that they didn't debrief on anybody but on themselves you know what i mean or what uh, they may have mentioned what car they were in but they just debriefed on themselves mentioned the crimes that they had done and debriefed and got sent back to the phu so they have s and y yards so they have special needs yard so <coughs> they uh they have their yards and what sucks though for them you know they're still so they have pretty active gang members on s and y yards too they're just you know <laughs> so they'll like lure you know active members they'll be like hey essay essay you know what I mean? like whatever they'll get them over there and then they'll smash them they'll be, you know, you'll be hearing yelling two five you know which is placenta you know 25 cents but anyway uh dropping quarters i guess so I got lost where I was at right now. Sorry, guys, bear with me. Remember, I'm also a sherm head and a heroin addict. So, unfortunately, I'm in recovery today. So, I, I could, might be able to say what little bit I have left. Uh, S and Y yards. Thank you. Thank you. So, the uh, EOP yards, they've been trying to integrate. So, they would take, how do you say? Oh, they would take lower numbers of you know, active gang drop uh, members and put them on the EOP yards to, so that the active members were outnumbered, you know, eight to one, what, eight to two, whatever. So they would take it like that, put them on there, but it's still a bloodbath. See, this is all plans and designs of the CDC system. So what it's doing is it's causing more violence to occur, that it's causing you know blood baths just like i said that's you can't describe it any other way blood baths to occur and that is so they can continue to make their union grow they continue to you know get the funding that they ask for because 
you know, it just goes to show we're savages, we're animals when we're there. And, you know, it's a shame that a long time ago, so before my time, a long, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far, far away, in the penal system, it was the convicts against the screws, you know? And, and that sounded like a much better system to me as a convict, you know, because... I gotta hate this man because he's this man because he's this color or whatever and like I got it I got the rules trust me I had them down packed and I enforced those rules as well you know but it just didn't make sense to me that the guy in the green suits the one fucking with us but we gotta hate this dude because he's got brown skin or black skin or whatever you know CBD guys CBD so hang on Um, prison violence funding oh yeah 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 so that's what they are doing it you know what I mean how do you like that methadone I absolutely do not like that methadone you know I mean it's fine if you're just using it to get off whatever you're trying to get off this thing's going circle 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 so that means the battery's dead or something no. so anyway uh let me see. Hey, good luck to all you guys that are, you know, gathering your clean time. You know, uh, don't let it be a false sense of security, though, please. Just because you have some time, man. And, and if you have some time and you haven't been to a meeting in a while, please, you guys, man, go to a meeting. They're not just for you. They're to help the new guy out. Let the new guy know that we fucking do recover. You know, like, because how selfish can you be? You know what I mean? To go to AA, NA, CA, whatever it is, get recovered, and then never show back up to show the newcomer that this, that what we do, to extend your hand, hey, you do, how you doing? So if somebody hadn't have done that for me, man, I would have felt like the lost stranger walking into the rooms. Like, somebody reached out to me and stuck their hand out to me before right. I had the balls to fucking say, hey, what's up, my name's whoop, whoop, whatever, you know? Like, before I had the balls to do that, somebody came up to me and they stuck their hand out and they welcomed me and, and they had, uh, I think he had nine years at the time, you know? And I was thinking, this dude can't have no fucking nine years. So I got, I got a really good story for you guys. I mean, an exciting story for, uh, how I got into recovery so I mean obviously I got into recovery by hi beautiful hi baby so I got into recovery because I was broken uh, all the shit that I'm discussing with you right now sat heavy with me right here you know all the things treacherous things I had done uh, I didn't know I was capable of those things until I did them and then once you start doing them uh, it just becomes what you do, you know, so on Fresh Out, you're going to hear some tales, you know, and that, that they're not just tales, I assure you, I've been pretty careful on what I've said, but I've also, everything I've said, it, it was underplayed, straight underplayed, you know, all right, baby, what are you doing, so I have my beautiful girl right here, uh, let me see if I can show her to you, so, <laughs> you see my girl? Uh, hi, beautiful. So, she's Rhodesian Ridgeback and Greyhound. Uh, I know some of you guys don't give a shit about a dog, but like, trust me, if it weren't for that dog, I, I, I probably would have been back already. You know, she's a, an emotional support animal, and sometimes I need emotional support because I keep my circle sort of small, man. You know, my trust issues are still huge. Uh, but what I will do is I'll go way, 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 way out of my way to help somebody out these days. And I get that freedom, you know. So today, I go by the P.O. box, and there's these five uh, less fortunate individuals sleeping on the concrete in the shade over there, you know. And I see them there every time, and they usually got a, a handle of vodka or a handle of something going on, but... One of them was just rocking back and forth today, and it wasn't that hot, but I popped the trunk. Mind you, I'm not working with a gang of money. 
You know what I mean? Like, I, I'd let you guys know that, not because I'm trying to scream broke, but you work in treatment, there's not a gang of money. So you do what you do out of love, or you don't do it, you know? So I, I walk, I pop the trunk, and I grab a gallon of water out, and I walk it over to him, and I set it down, and I, I, pull, I gave him the last $10 that I had on me, and I was like, here, you guys buy yourself a handle, man. There's five of you. Make sure all you guys get in on it. So they're not being a dredge side of me, you know what I mean? They're, they're stuck in their addiction, and I understand that addiction because I've been stuck in that, and I've been homeless, and all the things that I told you I was going to bring you, I'm going to bring you, you know what I mean? Because I've been involved in every single aspect of what I said on, on my commercial, you know what I mean? I've been involved in prostitution, I've been involved in fucking human trafficking, I've been involved in, in every aspect, homelessness, fucking junkiness, whatever you want to call it, alcoholism, whatever you need to call it, you know? Uh spiritual malady who would have ever thought who would have ever thought that I had a spiritual malady you know um society knew that you know the god of my understanding that they knew that so uh that's a little tidbit on you know what i was going to speak on for tonight um the bottom line is man when you get knocked down you get back up it's really simple I say it all the time, when you get knocked down, get back up. And that means at work or whatever. Sith, Syphysis was the name of the guy that I was trying to explain in the story. So they condemned him to eternity of pushing the same rock up a hill. That rock would roll back down the hill. He would go back down and push that same rock back up. And you know what? He acted like he liked it until he actually liked it. So that's a great story. I love that story, you know? And I, it's a myth. My bad. It's a myth. So and that's sort of how it is with recovery, too. You know, when you come in, you're, you're fucking, you're not right. You have one way of thinking, you know? And it's being around a bunch of happy people... <laughs> fuck wants to do that man I mean and I know they're all getting loaded right well you know there's probably few of them in there too but man I'm so grateful that I made the choice of fucking reaching into recovery and I also so what I like to try and do is help people get into recovery you know um, doesn't matter where you're at you know if you or somebody you love needs help getting into recovery uh, let me know into treatment. Let me know. You know, if you're from Southern California, I can help you get into, you know, a county facility if you don't have insurance. Um, if you have, you know, PPO insurance and you want to get in some place and someplace reputable, somebody who deals with these people. You know what I mean? I would not send anybody to an unreputable place just because of this. All these comments. Yeah, you know I mean, I only want to send people to the right places. You know, so. If that's the case, you need help with that, or somebody you love needs help with that, and you're tired of living in the disease, then get at me at ogbadgersheavyhitters at gmail.com, and I'll see what I can do for you. I'm sure I'll be able to do something, you know. Uh, but if you're from Southern California and you just want to change and change the location, all that, you know. And if you're from out of state and you want to come out to California, you'll get back home, too. Don't worry about all that, you know. Like... Let's get you clean, man. Let's show that life is worth living, you know. Um, we cannot become, <laughs> you know, just, we cannot become something better, man, if we don't fucking push for it. It's just that simple, you know. We cannot become something better if this is fucking still drug-induced, alcohol-induced, anything along those lines, you know. I would never have the balls to step up and reach out to let me see how many people now 264 people watching me thank you man thank you so yeah, as you can imagine i'm a little drugs no one used drugs around here that's right good that's beautiful usher gave me <laughs> who's usher usher gave me herpes that's fucking bummer for you my boy so uh, you got it for subject text so, like, I'm not a supporter of any of that except for fucking you using it to get off immediately because, like, a methadone kick, my worst kick ever was methadone. You know, uh, Subutex kick, I, 
it was much fun either, man, you know what I mean? But like, if it's used the way it's supposed to be used, taper, a quick taper, and just to get off the opiates and, and get moving on with your life. So like, remember, I tell you guys, we have a spiritual malady, and I believe that today, you know what I mean? Since I'm able to feel my, my spirituality, <laughs> things got a lot better, you know what I mean? Hey, Hazel Hero, thanks for subscribing. I'm sorry I missed a bunch of subscribers I was lost in the story um, I hope you enjoyed the story you know actually not actually I hope you didn't enjoy it and I hope that it fucking opened your eyes enough to go hey doesn't sound like something I want to try and live through you know uh, let me see <laughs> so I support that even though I can't discuss that you know like this isn't a political channel well, I'll pick it. Uh, yeah. Thanks. You like that? That's right. That's right. So, oh yeah, that's another thing. So a lot of you guys inquire about the music that I like. So let me just say this. Uh, man, like so, some of the stuff that I like to let work out to is obviously you know Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, In this moment is one of my favorite bands. Otep. Uh, I mean, let's let's face it. What kind of music don't I like? You know what I mean? I love Dio. I love any Black Sabbath. Uh, let us not forget the Oz. You know what I mean? But like Black Sabbath, I absolutely love. And I love you know. So aggression, misfits. There's not nothing I don't like. It. You know, hell, I'll even listen to some Taylor Swift if it's the right song. You know what I mean? I know I'm a half a fag, right? So whatever. You know, you know, like I like what I like. I like whatever's playing and it feels good. So that's just how that is. You know, I mean, it, let's go way back. Some Kenny G and some David Sanborn. It depends on if the bubble bath's hot enough. You know what I mean? The fucking company's right. So I'll listen to whatever I gotta listen to. Uh, I obviously, like I said, in this moment, it's like one of my favorite bands. Uh, my absolute favorite band of all time, and I'm sure I'm gonna hear shit about this one, but. Judas Priest, you know what I mean? I love Rob Holford, man. Nobody could sing like him. Uh, Queens Reich, Jeffrey Tate, nobody can hit those highs, man. You know, uh, the Distillers, Deftones, fucking, it just doesn't end, man. Like, I love music, you know? I believe in music therapy. You know, they want to always do saltwater therapy out here in California with a surfboard. I'm good with. So the treatment center I went to, they took me to see uh, Guns N' Roses, you know. Um, I went and seen TSOL a bunch of times, True Sons of Liberty, and I love them. Code Blue, you know, one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, so, like, they showed me there was another way of life, you know, like I... I I really appreciate them. Uh, man, looking back on that story right now, I can't tell you how fucking grateful I am that I'm where I am today. You know, it gets me a little... Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think I've ever heard him. So, uh, I'm so grateful to be where I am today, man, and not be fucking stuck there. You know what I mean? I don't know why I got a second chance, you know, like I said, my boy called me the other night from Ironwood, and he's stuck there all day. You know what I mean? Jason, love and respect, brother, if you're listening. You know, I got you however I can get you, you know? Uh, similar situation, you know? Like, uh, it doesn't matter. Like, so I knew him from the streets. We were kids. Uh, I ended up rear-ending his car, and next thing you know, we're both in fucking county jail, we're both fucking fighting ugly shit, and we're in the phone booth up on 9500 roof, and we're talking back and forth, and we're trying to be as manly as we can, and we're just, both just scared little boys, and, you know, it takes a lot for me to admit that today, but that, that was the case, man, I was just a scared kid fucking doing whatever the fuck I had to do to survive, and, and, I would do whatever I had to do to survive, you know what I mean? And I would like to think that most people would. So, so once again, P.O. Box 10863, Canoga Park, California, 
1-800-529-91309. So the seventh tradition, PayPal. OG Badgers, heavy hitters at Gmail. You know, uh, okay, do you still work out? Hell yeah, I still work out. What are you talking about? Like, there's no life without working out. You know what I mean? Music therapy, I said. I listen to when I'm working out. So, uh, I, I can bench, I can hit 315, still in my 50s, I can hit 315, but, you know, usually work out with two, like 285 or something along those lines, work it up to 285. I try not to go as heavy these days, these old tendons and the, all the prison blowouts, you know, I need a cortisone shot here, I need a cortisone shot in my ass for all I know. You know, everything's blowed out at this age, so, but who expected to live to be this age, right? Like, so take care of yourselves now while you can, guys, you know. Take care of your families, you know. Like, I, I, I was talking uh, yesterday, I think, and, man, if you got somebody in your life that you love and appreciate, please let them know that you love and appreciate them, man. I, re I recall I never heard that shit in my household. Look where it landed me. So, I know, pretty girl, Maggie, pretty girl, Kitas, pretty girls. So, you know, that's just part of being an animal owner. You know, we got to deal with the kids talking. But as I was saying, you know, like, love the one that you, you're, love the, man, just tell whoever you're with that you love them, you're proud of them, whatever the case is. Because you can never hear that enough. And I guarantee you that, I mean, don't say it so much to where it's not valued. Like, Kitas, knock it off. So my dog's name was Kitas after Anthony Kitas from Red Hot Chili Peppers. So uh, she's 16 years old. So, so uh, what was I saying? So yeah, man, be kind to your girl. Be kind to your neighbor. You know what I mean? If you if you start doing these things, it's contagious, bro. I swear to God. Like I was saying, I was driving down the street today. And there's this black guy next to me and like I felt the cackles on the back of my neck going up because I looked over and he's mean mugging me you know what I mean and I'm thinking this guy don't even know man like he don't even know so I can't help it but I just smile man I cracked the biggest smile I could and I waved at him like hey what's up you know what I mean? and when you know it, like I said, he smiled and waved back, man. Like, so this shit's contagious. I could have ran with him and like, what's up then, homie? You know what I mean? And what's that going to get? It's going to get a little car chase and a little whatever. It's going to get us pulled over and then we're going to get busy. Somebody's going to get hurt. So, like, all I had to do was take two seconds and smile and throw a hand wave. You know what I mean? So, uh... Yeah, I really got marbles in my deck. Tim Gray, the ring guy. Uh, show your dog. So a lot of you guys are asking about Bill Cosby. You know, it's another OJ thing, man. You know, so like. If you're wanting him freed just because he's a certain race, you might want to look at that, man. You know, because what if it was your sister that was raped or your daughter that was raped or something along those lines? Would you still be saying free bill? You know, and let me say this. They wouldn't have convicted him if the proof wasn't in the pudding. You know, like it's real simple. And so don't let a, a skin tone determine let somebody's behaviors and actions say you know like so bill was getting paid for all that shit being mr ha, ha, nice guy on tv you know what i mean but apparently the money went to his head so I, I, he's too old to get his cheeks busted who wants to hit some saggy old ass you know what i mean he's too old to get his cheeks busted uh He's definitely not too old to get his wig split, though. I can assure you that. You know what I mean? There's some people in there that just don't play that fucking rape game. You know? So, if... if So, 288A and rape, you know what I mean? Those are two cases that you're not just going to fucking tell us, well, there's a story behind it. 
So we want to hear that story. We want to hear it in the back. Why don't you come tell it to us? You know? That's right. Bill Cosby put himself in cuffs. That's right. Like his actions, man. We all have to pay for our actions. You know, I had mentioned Tukey Williams today. So the man was a leader. He was a born leader. I'll give him that. You know what I mean? Look at it. So I try to be careful what I say on here because I don't want my prejudice. To, not that I don't still have some because I am human. But like he could have done so much with his life being the leader that he was. But instead he started just fucking red or blue cause of blood, whatever. Just don't matter. Suck a die for your life with my shotgun scatter. You know, and then so all about killing and this and that. Drug dealing, killing, drug dealing. All, you know, all them rap songs. But then in the end, you know, he turned it around and was writing kids books and, you know, got in touch with himself, I guess, really. Or I don't know if it was a ploy or what. But, like, you see all these solid gangsters, killers go in there and then they get a second chance to come out here. And I guarantee you they're all in a church of some sort. Uh, they're all in, a, in in program of some sort. Because now they've it took... You know, doing fucking 25 years to fucking wake up to the reality of what you kids could be grasping now, man. Forget the crowd. You don't need the crowd. You know what I mean? Become your own person. Don't let somebody else determine. Just like Deneen Williams on Facebook. Uh, what's it called? She's, she's a black woman. and She's a, a conservative, you know, and she gets so much hate. Because she's a conservative and she's a black woman, and they just expect her to follow the democratic way because she's black. And you know, like, I respect her a lot because she's a free thinker. You know what I mean? And I respect anyone that thinks for themselves. You know, uh, motorized misfit. So, um, let's see, what else? Okay, so. Am I still doing shows with Big Herc? Yeah, there'll be another release next Friday. Um, more prison stories, you know. Uh, hey, man, if you like our content, let some people know, you know. Let them know. And I try to be about the positivity today, but I just want you to know, you know what I mean? Like, you guys could think I'm a punk today, but... And you can call me a punk today as long as you ain't within arm's distance trying to hurt me. You know, I'm not worried about anything that comes out of your mouth. And, you know, I know I gangbang a little bit back and forth on the comments, but I always try and do it in a positive aspect. And the reason I do that, I'm going to be right up front with you, is it helps build my channel. You know, I, I'm... Tr OG Badger likes Trump, <laughs> whatever. So this isn't a political station. We're going to do this, but once again, you know... We're not going to go into politics on here. We're not going to go into religion. What God you choose to follow. I don't... As long as you have a God... Hey, thank you so much. Silas Marner. $25 donation. Beautiful. Thank you. Seventh tradition. It's going to be loaded in there. All that money will be available to help out another individual that we're going to follow their story if this channel... Kevin, I'll just subscribe. Kevin, thank you. <coughs> I uh, appreciate you guys subscribing I, and I really appreciate the seventh tradition because like I said I want to do good things with it I've done a lot of shit in my life you know and I want to give back and I want to fucking help somebody else you know and, and some of you guys may be upset that I'm choosing to do it with vets but I, you know there's a five finger death punch song out there if you ever watch that video man like I'm a pretty hard guy to make cry but I'll tell you what I get choked up every time you know and I get tears swelled up in my eyes when I see these guys that go over there and they give up their families and they're out there while their wives are back here cheating on them they're over there fucking putting in work not everybody's wife's cheating on them fellas I know I got some you know what I mean? Some soldiers out there on my team, but, you know, I get it. I won. Thank you for subscribing. So, you know, but they're giving up their lives. Their kids, they're spending, losing sight of their kids, and they're over there, and they're, they're fucking helping. Nate Irizari? Irizari. So, they're over there defending the USA, you know? Like, so... This old man, we just were doing some funding for him because uh, Aliyah Holton, thank you. Uh, 
an older man was wearing a, a mega hat. I, I didn't know what it meant until just recently. I guess it stands for Make America Great Again. But some kids are giving them some bullshit about it. I'm not going to go into <coughs> any whatever. But they threw a fucking brick at the man and hit him in the face and peeled his fucking whole side of his face. And this is an older man. Make America great again. Hell, just make America great, man. I don't care what nationality you are. If you're down for America because you live in America, man, you got my support. You know what I mean? Like, how could anyone be against that? So anyway, I'm starting to get off on pol pol political shit right now, and I don't want to do that. But I just don't get how that kind of hate could be brewed out there to where... Nah, I'm not going to do that one, Julian Chaparro. You guys almost got me one time being in your neighborhood. So, and I thought I thought you guys weren't allowed to be called boys anymore over there. Out there for all of us. That gang banging shit, if it don't get you dead, get you locked up. You know, the, you, you never see a gang banger unless he made it by rapping or whatever he does. Living anywhere other than the projects, you know. So... If you're project happy, that's fine. But I think everybody should want to shoot for more. Don't let this government keep us down. You know what I mean? Don't let our people keep us down. Try and pull your, your fellow man up. Everybody. You know? So, I feel like I've been... What time is it? It's 9 o'clock. Oh, my God. I talked to you guys zero. Are we down to zero listeners still? <laughs> so, probably lost a few of you guys. You know? Listen, man. Nothing but love and respect to all you. Thank you for the donations. They're, go they're going into a separate bank account as a, as a seventh tradition. I'll keep supporting myself, you know what I mean? But the channel is going to help support, you know, a vet out there or a homeless individual that's we feel worthy. Well, I don't even have to feel worthy. They just have to feel that they're worthy of doing this. So I'm going to be reaching out, you know, coming, stopping in and checking in at the homeless places and just it, introducing myself to them and... You know, just get a feel for their... Go kick it with them. Bring them some sandwiches, kick back with them. And, and I want to help somebody get off the streets, man. I want to help a couple people get off the streets. How do I donate? So, okay. OG Badgers Heavy Hitters at Gmail, PayPal. So, does that answer your question? Can you buy roids in prison? Yeah, usually they're uh, pig steroids, you know what I mean? Or whatever, if you end up somewhere where there's a farm, there's cow steroids. But I mean, what's not pig steroids or cow steroids? You can get testosterone and all that stuff. You're gonna pay out the ass for it. Um, have I let, kept you guys on here too long? Huh, I hope not. You know, I didn't know I could speak for a whole straight hour. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about maybe hooking up some heavy hitter shirts. So, because that money will go into the seventh tradition too, man. I, it's really my life's goal now to, to get some people off the streets, you know, and maybe get some other people motivated in their area to help out the homeless, man. Help out the less fortunate, you know. Uh, so I'm going to ask you all a favor for tomorrow. Just try tomorrow. When you're driving, don't answer your phone. Don't text on your phone. Unless your phone is fucking hands-free, please do not do it. You know, we're losing way too many people out here. These young kids trying to text and they get lost in the emotional part of their boyfriend fucking being at Christina's house, you know, and, and they're fucking running people over and they're fucking hitting people and it's becoming an epidemic. So that there's a couple of things that I have issues on and that's one of them, you know what I mean? I, I try my best not to text and drive. Everything in my car is hands-free. Uh, I got me a 19, oh no, a 2004 Honda Accord, you know, so I just bought this little thing that goes into the thing that, that uh, Bluetooth into the thing that does everything. <laughs> so, listen guys, once again, uh, OG Badgers Heavy Hitters at Gmail, PayPal. Thank you for anyone that's helping and willing to donate, capable of. Uh, P.O. Box 10863, Canoga Park, California, 91309. Man, if you're from another country, send me some pictures. I want to start a scrapbook. of. Man, I love your guys' scenery. I had to get you guys. I know it looks funny, but uh, this brick wall is brought to you by somebody. So, like 
Honda is my dream, Honda is my dream car, right? <laughs> dream a little bit bigger, but they're still great cars. I love them. You know I me, mean? hi Maggie. So uh, I want to show you guys the girls real quick. So this is Maggie. Say hi, Maggie. Say hi. Say hi. So that's Maggie. Kita, come here. Come say hi to the girls. Come on. Okay, Maggie. You've said hi. Now, Kitas. This is my old girl right here. Where are you at? Kitas. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. All right. She's not interested. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, some people want it to happen. Some people need it to happen. But heavy hitters make it happen. So thank you for tuning in once again. I uh, appreciate any and all donations. Uh, you can send them after the thing. And, you know, you guys, if you watch my videos, please, for the time being, go and leave a comment. You know, I'll get back to you as, if I can. Um, like I said, negative comments aren't really necessary here. Uh, I, I usually get two dislikes before the video is even up and then no more after that. So I appreciate you all as you should appreciate yourselves. Have a great day.